What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another edition of the podcast. My name is Ramon, and this is Dad's Podcast Project. And today I wanted to talk about running into anti-vaxxers out in the wild. Now, this was something that happened Saturday. Uh, my son and I, we went to Costco, and lo and behold, like we're, we're going about getting our regular, our regular shopping done at per usual, and... While waiting in line, you you sometimes come across some of the most interesting conversations, or you tend to eavesdrop on some of the most interesting conversations from the people in line. And it was there was actually a couple that was right behind us. I, I mean, just two people. I, I won't say if they're a couple. I, like I really don't want to throw anybody under the bus here, but two individuals who were behind us, and they were kind of just talking about vaccination. And they were talking about it loud enough for myself to be able to catch what was going on and, and really just wonder like, okay, well, where's this conversation going then? <laughs> I don't like to eavesdrop, but when I, whenever I hear people talking about this, it's like such a hot topic uh, in social media and amongst other parents. And, and it can also be like a taboo topic that some people just don't want to talk about. But it was interesting to me that, and I'm, to preface, I'm not trying to say or throw anybody under the bus here, or tell you your point of view is wrong if it's for religious purposes or whatever the case may be. I did a podcast about why I vaccinated my children and why you should do your own research and make your own educated opinion as to why or why not you should vaccinate your children. If you're just going out there and basing it off of, well, I don't get sick or the cavemen didn't have vaccines or vaccinations lead to autism, then we can just end the conversation right here because this is not for you. You clearly are based off an emotional opinion rather than a scientific or uh, an, an, an opinion that has been researched, critiqued by peers in the medical field and come to determine that vaccinations are beneficial. Now, you don't have to take my word for it again do your own research. But most commonly, the conversations that I do here are based on that which are feeling oriented. And these individuals, they were, they were talking about their feelings as to why they weren't getting their children vaccinated or their child really vaccinated. They, the, I don't even want to like specify the the male or the woman, the mother or the father, but just one of them was talking about how their parent was really against it. Said, "Ah, we didn't get sick back in my day. It's it's a it's a do nothing thing." And it wasn't really that tinfoil hat kind of conversation that you sometimes hear <laughs> like the rare breed of individuals having that the the government is putting something in in us. Um, it wasn't anything like that, but it was feeling derived. It was, you know, the grandfather, he was telling his, his child pretty much that I, we didn't get sick back in our day. So I don't see the reason why, you know, kids need to build a, a, a robust immune system. And they, they, they're having this conversation back and forth and it's like, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, okay. That, that actually sounds like something right there maybe maybe we're 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 on the right path here but the other was that it could lead to seizure now i hadn't heard this i i i always hear about autism it's just vaccinations lead to kids having autism and nobody wants that for their child but this one was like seizures you can get a vaccination and and go into a seizure so their passion behind why they didn't get their child vaccinated because they would feel so guilty if in fact they had a seizure as a result of this, that that was enough for them. That was enough to push the needle in the direction of not vaccinating them. And not once in this conversation, again, it's really just taking a, a snippet 
of a conversation that they probably had with each other for, for days, for weeks, for maybe years before they had children, when they had their child, and during the course of raising this child. I know that a lot of times through eavesdropping or through passing by, we can tend to pass judgment on people based on just that small little snippet. A case in point, there was a I think there was a post online. I don't know if it was through Instagram or if it was on YouTube or Reddit or something like that. A person telling a story about how they heard, I think it was someone who posted it on Reddit and it was a tweet. And it was a person who uh, listened to a mother talk to their child in a, in a manner of which, if you're a parent, you'll understand. Uh, their child kept egging them on like, I want, I want, um, was it? I want Fruity Pebbles or I want Fruit Loops, like one of those super sugary cereals. And the mother kept saying, no, you're not going to get Fruit Loops. You're not going to get Fruity Pebbles. And they kept saying, well, I want this. I want this. I want this. And eventually they grabbed the box, put it in the cart. Mother's like, we're not getting this. Took that box, put it back on the shelf. Little boy's like, I want this cereal. And the mother's like, grab that cereal then. See what happens. And <laughs> the, the passerby was really taken back by this. They were really on their social justice warrior soapbox in saying that this child has no idea about, you know, double meanings or about innuendos or I'm probably using the wrong, uh, the wrong terms here, but they don't know what, what you mean or they don't know sarcasm. So clearly this child was walking into a bear trap and the, all the comments were telling this person, have a child, then come back to me because they were a childless individual who was posting on their, on their soapbox on, on Twitter. And as parents, we've all been there. We've all been in that moment, especially when you're out in public and your child's just pushing on that button. And it's like, do you really try to maintain that composure as best you can? Unfortunately, you, you sometimes get seen by somebody passing by and they catch you at your worst or at an off moment to, to put it better. More common analogy would be people talking about, oh, Caltrans workers, people who work on the highway, holding that stop sign, making a very, a very good wage for the work that they're doing. And, you know, I was in that boat too. And it wasn't until it was a, one of the last jobs that I had as a welder that I was up in Rio Vista, I believe, doing replacing some, some grading on the toll bridges that they have there. Well, not toll bridges, but they're, um, what are they called? Whatever the, whatever the name of the bridges are where they, they come up. Maybe that's a toll bridge. I don't know. But we were doing that work. And it was nonstop. There was no break. There was no lunch. Sun up to evening was just straight work. And any moment that I could just be standing there to direct traffic because we needed to cross in order to take tools to the truck or whatever the case may be, someone could have very clearly just been passing by and said, look at that guy making a good amount of money just standing around, having zero clue what my work day was actually like. And so now I have a much greater appreciation for those who work in Caltrans. I think that unless you do the job yourself, you really have no, you have no ground to stand on. And the same thing goes for parenting. It can be really tough for us out here to try to do the best we can and we get caught in these off moments. And maybe that's what happened when I overheard this conversation. But I think that one of the things I didn't hear in this conversation, it's not like I had to hear it. I guess I'm really kind of walking myself back here, but I didn't hear that they had done any research, that they had any facts. And you kind of ask yourself like, well, do you stand in 
do you say something at that point? And the knee jerk reaction for myself is no, it's none of my business. That's not my child. That's not my responsibility. I don't know these people. They're complete and total strangers to me. I have zero skin in the game. There is nothing that says I should do this or I need to interject myself into these individuals' lives as a complete and total stranger. As, needless to say, in the line at Costco, it's not my place. And it, that is not the place for the conversation to be had. A podcast such as this, maybe this is the forum for having these kinds of conversations for the individuals who might be in a gray area. Because I really feel that these individuals were in like a gray area. Like they could have very well found themselves maybe stumbling across this or any of the hundreds of thousands of videos that are available on YouTube and just further educate themselves and make a more an educated decision on what it is that they should do. Only time will tell. And when it came to making the decision, another topic that I had previously talked about, but making the decision to have our daughter undergo an MRI, less than two years old, having to be sedated. And it, it's a very hard thing for us to, to have had to sit down and actually have that conversation about. And by us, I mean my wife and I. Now, we're not trying to ask strangers. We're not going to Facebook. And clearly, we're not going to Twitter or anywhere else to try to seek these answers out. But we are speaking with the doctor. We're getting a second opinion and we're doing our own research and making the best decision that we can for our child. I feel that more often than not, a lot of people don't make it past that first conversation. And the first conversation usually is the parents, like the parents have that conversation with their parents or granddad, grandma, whomever. And then it's coworkers, it's friends, and it's social media. And they get they base all their decision on the community that they that they're surrounded with. But seldom do people really go out on their own. I think that when you talk about things like medicine, politics, even money, saving strategies, whatever the case may be, even purchasing like options, like what you should spend your money on or what you shouldn't. Everybody has an opinion on how you should dictate your life. And I think that the more opinions that you gather on your own, like via YouTube, um, maybe not Instagram, maybe not Twitter, but and maybe not WebMD if, <laughs> if it's a medical issue. But I mean, YouTube is like my go-to. That's where I usually accumulate all of my information and do my research. And it's usually somewhere in the middle. Definitely speak to a professional. If you, if you have a question about vaccinations, talk to a doctor. And don't just talk to one, talk to more than one. If you wanted legal advice, you wouldn't ask your parents. You would hopefully ask a lawyer. Or you would ask someone who's been there and done that. Or you would see the cause and effect of doing whatever it is you think you should do or not doing whatever it is you're thinking of not doing. The cons in my research heavily outweighed, or I mean the pros in my research heavily outweighed the cons. There were too many benefits to getting vaccinated than there were for not. And with the talk of the autism, that shouldn't even be on the table anymore. That is a topic that has been put to bed by those in the medical community who have given their peer reviews to the sole and single individual who put that report and that misinformation out there to begin with. However, it continues to perpetuate itself. You're not going to convince everybody. Out of 10 people, one person's just going to believe they're going to be that hardliner that is like, no, no on vaccinations. The earth is flat. Um, what other what other crazy um, plane trails are dropping whatever dopamines to to dumb down the community? Um, you know, chemtrails in the sky and things like that. There are going to be that one in ten. There there will be that one in ten. 
of the community. And as the community gra- grows larger, more people will feel that way. And especially with something like vaccines, as, as well as it worked for measles to eliminate it completely, enough time has passed for people to forget how serious an epidemic it was. That generation, they're, they're, they've already forgotten. And it's this new generation who has grown up in a world that they just don't, they don't know. I think of things like uh, dystopic, futuristic movies like The Matrix. When Neo is, he's in the real world or the world of the real, as Morpheus put it. And he's seeing the, what is it, the water purification or treatment uh, machines. And he's asking uh, one of the elders, I don't even know if this guy is like a, a shot caller or whatever, but he's talking to him like, you know, what are those for? It's like, oh, that treats the water that we drink. Who built it? Nobody knows. <laughs> it's just been there and we have it. Kind of like measles. What's that? Nobody knows. Or no one remembers, but it's gone. They've got this vaccine that allegedly got rid of it. Should we be taking it anymore? Nah, I don't get sick. I don't know anyone who's gotten the measles. So maybe no, maybe maybe we don't have to take it. It's things like that that become really scary. And with social media, this this misinformation just further spreads about. I hope to be a person who can who can share my story. And I do walk the walk. I don't just talk the talk. So when it comes to getting the, I mean, I was vaccinated as a kid. When it came to getting our our children vaccinated, my wife and I were kind of questioning and going through the same like, well, do do we even need vaccinations anymore? What what are vaccines even going to do? And so, because we sat down and had these conversations, it was like, well, I can't knowingly have my children get vaccinated if I'm not going to go in and get shots myself. So being a person who has never gone in for a flu shot or like when the bus comes by your job and they say, Hey, we're giving out flu shots out here or flu season comes about and everyone's online or you see commercials. Don't forget to get your flu shot. I always passed on that. I never, I was like, I don't get sick, so I don't need that. But now it's like, well, if I'm having my kids get shots, I should just go do it too. We got our flu shot for the past, I mean, ever since my son was born, pretty much I've been going and getting my flu shot. I neglected doing it over the Christmas break. However, I will be doing it in the next couple of days. But it's one of those things that you have to, I think that in raising our children, we have to lead by example. If... We don't want our children to yell or scream, then we shouldn't yell or scream ourselves. If we want our children to get a shot and get a vaccine, well, I should get it myself as well. At least that's my point of view. If you if you have a different one, I think that's great because it's usually somewhere in the middle where things usually land, uh, the like the right course of action. It's never to one extreme or the other. It's always somewhere in the middle, I find. And to me, this is my middle. This is my middle ground. If I'm going to do something and I expect that of my children, or if I expect something of my children, then I should be the one to do it too. So just kind of an interesting little thing that happened coming across anti-vaxxers out in the wild. If you come across anti-vaxxer out in the wild too, just know it's none of your business. (laughs) Don't approach them. Don't try to talk to them. I mean, You don't need to make a stand right then and there. I don't think it's anybody's business to do so. Too too often do we try to interject ourselves in strangers' lives. Put the information out there on social media and let it find the people who are in the middle. Sometimes approaching someone like that as aggressively or as passionately or as even as educated as you may be might be the point that just turns them off completely and you might lose them. I felt that these individuals were definitely on, maybe on the line on whether or not they would or they wouldn't. 
I think that there's still room for information to find its way to them. And because of that, I make this podcast. Maybe they stumble across this. I put it out there on my Instagram. Maybe someone they know sees my post and that leads them to do even more research on their own. This is a small community that I live in. If this message reaches you and your community, I mean, that's great. But really, I'm speaking to the people who are here, who are in the area where I live, who go about their day-to-day and want to lead better lives. And for one, try to try to be a better like community person myself by not not going up to someone while we're waiting in line at Costco to buy our stuff. But now I'm just rambling and going on too long. So I'll end it here. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to this podcast. I want to thank you guys for your continued support. I really want to give a continued shout out to those of you from Canada who keep coming by and listening to this podcast. My wife and I, we took a trip during Christmas break up to Seattle, Washington, and we were just right there. It It's a bucket list item for myself. I want to make it to Canada. I want to do the whole Tim Hortons coffee experience and eat poutine or poutine. I don't, I don't, I forget what it's called, but French fries, gravy. I mean, yeah, I'm sold. I want that. I want to consume that. And so Canada is definitely a bucket list place that I want to go. So it's actually really cool that people from Canada found, have found their way to me. And thank you. Thank you guys again for, for listening. So with that being said, thank you. And (laughs) I'm trying to work transitions too for the video here. So thank you guys. And until next time, see ya.